Welcome back in. It is the WalterFootball.com Odd Shopper Combo. Walt from Walter Football is in the house. I'm Aton. We appreciate you rolling with us. We don't ask much on Odd Shopper. Thumbs up, subscribe. We have a ton to tell you about what's happening at WalterFootball.com. It is the final week, week 18, but the 17th game for the NFL squads around the league. And Walt, we have a lot from playoffs to drama to tragic to everything that's happened last week wrapped up in one. So eager to see how you see this schedule coming up. Two and three last week, can't go five and oh every week. So we kind of gloss over that, but you've been on fire for the season. Yeah, it's a big week coming up uh, for us here. I'm, I think I'm tied for 85th in the contest, so pretty much uh, close to the money. And in the mini contest, I'm tied for second. So uh, with a good week, uh, I'll, I'll maybe take first. So uh, looking forward to it. And I, I've been thinking about these games all week. Like it's all I've been thinking about. So uh, yeah, looking forward <laughs> to, to this card. All right, two games on Saturday. You have both of them. Let's start in chronological order. Yeah, so um, what I like to do is keep tabs on how I do with each team every year. Um, and there are some teams I can't read. I'll admit it, like the Commanders. I think I'm like 4-11-1 in their games this year. But with the Chiefs, I'm 14-2 and against the spread. And it's not like rocket science here. I just fade them every week. It's because they don't cover these high spreads. They just can't put together a full game. And look at the results. I mean, they almost lost to the Broncos twice. They beat the Raiders at home by one. Uh, they went to overtime against the Titans and Malik Willis. This team just doesn't cover high spreads, and this is another high spread. I, I don't see why the Chiefs would suddenly win by double digits against the Raiders, who were very competitive last week. I thought there was a chance that they would just quit after Derek Carr left, but the Jarrett Stidham, he would look better than Derek Carr somehow. Um, they, they really uh, tried hard, and this this I think this could be their Super Bowl. So um, I, I think the Raiders fight the Chiefs hard, and um, I, and I, I've been asking this to everyone, and no one has gotten the right answer. So I'm, I'm curious if you, if you if you can get it. Don't count um, on me then. If you're asking <laughs> smart people and they're not getting it, don't count on me, man. Well, well, how many how many games have the Raiders lost by more than seven this year? How many do you think? So they've played 16 games. And see, I know to never lay points on the road with Carr and McDaniels and combine that. So I'm I'm going to say of the 16 games, they've lost 11 by less than a touchdown. Okay. okay Total so, guess. Yeah, yeah well, um, well, they've only lost by uh, seven or more once this year which is, is kind of crazy. Okay. Uh, yeah, all their games have been close. The only game they lost by more than seven was that Saints game where they the third of their team had the flu. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and think about how they've done wow. against teams teams currently in the playoffs this year. They lost to the Chargers by five. They lost to the Chiefs by one. They lost to the Jaguars by seven. That was the week after the flu game, so they still might have had it. Uh, they beat the Seahawks by six. They beat the Chargers in a revenge game by seven. They beat the Patriots by six, and they lost to the 49ers by three. Those are all their games against the current te playoff teams. So, again, I don't I don't see why they would suddenly lose by double digits. I, I love the Raiders plus nine, nine and a half. Love that. You mentioned the, the way in which they've been able to cover these, especially – these one are losing by less than seven right there in front of you. Beautiful way to start. We have another game on Saturday that we're going to get to. Curious to see how you look at this, especially with the strategy from both coaches that were completely opposite last week. But WalterFootball.com, you guys are doing a ton of things. We're getting closer, Walt, right? And and you've been pumping this because it's the it's one of many things that we want to highlight at WalterFootball.com. But you keep getting closer to the draft. You guys are keep <laughs> updating the mock drafts. There is nobody on the planet that covers the NFL draft like you guys do at WalterFootball.com. And you do other stuff, right? Like, I feel like this is the bit out of Seinfeld where it's like, it does other things. You guys do so <laughs> many other things. But when you're knocking out that market better than everybody, we just have to highlight it. Yeah, we update our mock drafts every week, both Charlie Campbell and ours. Charlie's our senior NFL draft analyst. Um, it's amazing how many people he talks to around the NFL. Like, I'll get texts from him saying, uh, Team X is taking player Y uh, a couple days before the draft. Or I'll get a uh, forwarded email that he's had. Like, he said, like an email chain with a GM. Like, uh, it's, it's insane how he talks to everyone and he gets all the inside info. I've mentioned this before, but we've nailed every single draft prop, uh, except for extreme long shots last year. Uh, just based on info, he got 48 hours before the draft. So I'm really looking forward to the draft props uh, this year. And uh, I was never so sad to to have like limits on sportsbooks where I could bet. Like I was just, <laughs> I was like, I just maxed out everything and like we just crushed it. 
It's amazing. We're going to do that again. We're going to remind you, of course, about what you can do at WalterFootball.com beyond, but not only the NFL mock draft where you can bet and take advantage of that. All right, the second game here. Mike Vrabel sat everybody. Doug Peterson went the other way and started and played everybody into the ground before hammering mm. their opponent into that. Which side are you on here, game two? Yeah, it's weird. Like, not only did the Jaguars uh, play everyone and the Titans sit everyone, almost everyone, um, the Titans had three more days of rest uh, compared yeah. to the, the Jaguars. So I, I think that gives the Titans a big advantage here. Also, the spread doesn't seem right to me. Um, I, I made this line personally, uh, Jaguars minus three and a half. Uh, so we're getting two and a half points of value at six. Um, and just think about the first game. The Titans were minus four against Jacksonville at home. So we have a 10-point swing here uh, suddenly. And... I can't think of why, except for maybe the quarterback position. You know, Joshua Dobbs is going to start for the Titans. But I, I, I've i been saying this every week. Like, I like good or well-coached teams with backup quarterbacks. It tends to hit a lot. Um, we saw the Titans uh, with Malik Willis take the Chiefs to overtime. So if they, if they can do that, I'm sure they can hang with the Jaguars. Uh, Mike Vrabel is 21-9 and against the spread as an underdog of three, and a, uh, three or Love more that. points. He's just so good in this role, and uh, no one believes the Titans can win this game. I think that the Titans are going to have a great defensive game plan for for Trevor Lawrence, and I think uh, Derrick Henry, who ran for more than 100 yards in the first half of that game, he should have a great performance as well. Uh, and so with the Titans, we're getting the better running game by far. We're getting the stronger defense, and we're getting the better head coach with six points. It just seems like a no-brainer to me. I love the Titans plus six. Wouldn't surprise me if they won outright. Pains me to say it because I'm financially invested multiple ways in the Jaguars winning this game and Doug Peterson even winning coach of the year, which I don't think he will. But I, I love what you, you bring up just as far as the backup quarterback, Josh Dobbs, that three extra days while it's rest for veterans, it's also to work with a guy who's been in the league. You can't fast forward Malik Willis overnight. You can slowly work a guy like Dobbs and say, just don't make mistakes, right? I mean, he, clearly Lawrence is the better quarterback, but that doesn't mean Dobbs and Lawrence can't finish equal or maybe even better as far as the turnover margin. So I love where you're going here, and it pains me to say it. Jacksonville could still win, but when it comes to that number, how can you not take the seven, seven plus? Yeah, it just uh, it seems like a great value for the Titans. Um, and, and yeah, Dobbs is a smart quarterback and, uh, you know, he, he'll be able to pick things up a lot faster who, than Malik Willis, who's a rookie and just kind of like probably the, the, the game's probably too fast for him right now. Like maybe he's good. He's going to be good in a couple of years. But Dobbs is is a veteran uh, despite not playing all that much. And he he showed good chemistry with Traylon Burks and Robert Woods uh, in his first game. So it should only be better in this one. All right. Go ahead. Ram Seahawks. Walter. I, I rarely call you Walter. Break, <laughs> Go ahead. Break my heart. Yeah, sorry. I, I know which side you're on. I'm on the opposite side here. I, I like the Rams uh, plus six and a half. Uh, I've been fading the Seahawks all the second half of the year. It's worked every single week except for last week. And I think it didn't work last week because Mike White was just not nearly 100%, which was really frustrating to me because he was full in practice all week. So I thought he'd be fine. But just just watching him, he just couldn't deliver passes to Garrett Wilson. Like Garrett Wilson was wide open sometimes, and he just couldn't get the ball to him. Uh, so I, I think that's why the Seahawks won. But, you know, otherwise, uh, the second half of the year, they've gotten blown out by the Panthers and the Buccaneers. They lost to the Raiders at home. Uh, they almost lost to the, these Rams with John Wolford, a quarterback. And uh, Baker Mayfield, while not great, is definitely better than John Wolford. Uh, the Seahawks is 25th in net adjusted EPA. The Rams are 26. So they're right next to each other. That tells me this line should be like Seahawks minus one and a half. Uh, teams get like about one and a half at home these days instead of three, which used to be the case. Now it's like one and a half. So uh, if that's correct, we're getting five points of value with the key numbers of three and six. I, I think that's incredible. And just like look at how the Rams attack defenses. Um, you know, I say that loosely. They, they haven't done all that well offensively this year, but they, they have two strong points of offense with Cam Akers suddenly looking a lot better. Yeah. And Tyler Higby, who's been good all year. Uh, that's how they attack uh, opposing defenses. And the Seahawks are terrible against running backs and they're terrible against tight ends. So, I, I, you know, the Jets couldn't really uh, attack this mode because, you know, Zonovan, Zonovan Knight's not a good running back. And Tyler Conklin's kind of like uh, just a pedestrian tight end, whereas Tyler Higby is just a lot better than Tyler, the Tyler Conklin. So uh, I, I think that the Seahawks or the Rams have a big advantage here. And finally, um, this is an angle I love in the final couple of weeks of the season. When a team that needs to win a game is going against a team that is eliminated, 
uh, the team that's eliminated is it covers about like 65 percent of the time i don't have the exact numbers but i think it's like 95 and 59 against the spread the team that's eliminated against the team that needs to win so it's like a choke factor with these teams everyone expects the seahawks to win i think the seahawks might lose outright uh in but anyway we get six and a half i'll take the six yeah. and a half I, I think this is a field goal game either way uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the rams won at the end all right, so you, I think you've answered my question here. You you feel much better if I don't take the Seahawks six and a half, which I did not, and tease them down to a pick em. So I, I I think to tease teams down, I think you need the seven, six, and three. Uh, that, that's like so, mathematically the only way it makes it makes sense. Um, so otherwise, six and I, a half to zero, I've lost a half a point of value. Yeah, because you need uh, like I would tease down if it was seven and a half to one and a half. I think that would be good because you get seven, six, and three. Um, just mathematically, it, it just gives you the best odds. Um, just teasing six and a half down uh, is is more often than not going to be a losing proposition. Maybe not in this case. Like the, the Seahawks could win outright, like I said. Um, but um, normally I wouldn't do that. But uh, you know, if if you feel strongly about it, yeah, you can definitely do it. So uh, I, I, look, I feel I feel what you feel after these videos because you're much better at this than I do. <laughs> so i i may cash out we'll see we'll see we've got two other games to get to this one is definitely carrying some extra weight to it with the Bengals and ravens yeah so um my analysis is going to be uh, assuming that the, the nfl is not going to make up the the bills Bengals game which sounds like it's going to happen um and if that's the case these teams will likely play each other in the the, the opening round of the playoffs and uh, I'm sure you remember this uh, being an Eagles fan. Uh, I think it was 2001. The Eagles and the Buccaneers had to play each other in the final week of the season. And they were already slated to play each other in the first week of the playoffs. Yep. And what did those teams do? They not, None of them played the starters. They, they right. all played their backups. And I think that's how uh, these teams are going to approach this game. Um, so we might see Brandon Allen versus Anthony Brown here. Uh, and if maybe Lamar Jackson is going to come back, maybe it's still Tyler Huntley. If that's the case, like there's no way in the world a Brandon Allen's going to cover a seven and a half point spread, uh, you know, like maybe some weird turnovers or something. But the Ravens, I, I think, look great at plus seven and a half. And even without that in mind, if, if both teams play the starters, I still like the Ravens because this is another game where you have a good or well coached team playing their backup quarterback uh, with Tyler Huntley. Huntley looked better last week. Like he had some rocky starts, but he was nursing an injured shoulder. He actually looked better last week. Mark Andrews looked looked 100% for the first time in a while last week. So I think the Ravens are coming on. And this is a situation where John Harbaugh has uh, usually covered as an underdog of seven or more in his coaching career. John Harbaugh is 10 and five against the spread. But if two of those losses were with Jimmy Claus in a quarterback. So I, I think you can discard those and maybe say that he's really 10 and three against the spread as a touchdown underdog or more. Um, and, you know, he looked at the Bengals. Uh, it's just how do they bounce back from that Monday night game? Like Tough. like that mental hardship of, of watching another player go down right in front of them. Like T Higgins, you got to, you got to feel bad for him. Uh, it, I, I don't know. It was, it, first of all, it's a short week. And second, they had to deal with that. Uh, I don't know how they get up for this game. And I, I just think this line is, is just too high for a divisional rival. Um, you know, I, and, and look at Joe Burrow's spread record uh, throughout his career. So when he's not favored by the touchdown or more, he's 31 on 11 against the spread, which is amazing. But when he's favored by touchdown or more, he's just two and four against the spread. So it just tells me that this game is probably going to be close side by three or six points, maybe four or something like that. Uh, I, I think the Ravens uh, cover this one pretty easily. One more game to get to. We'll his, see if anything hits the cutting floor. I know it's slim pickings here with playoffs, elimination, et cetera. And then remind everybody, of course, what's going on with WalterFootball.com before we get out of here. We also have this really cool offer courtesy of DraftKings. It's going to be easy. It's simple. It's going to take you 90 seconds out of your life to sign up. Click a link below. You'll be on DraftKings. Put your information in. Link an account. All part of the 90 seconds, mind you, right? Deposit five and only $5. That's what you need. And then place a wager. It can be on anything. Any market, right? Just pick an NBA game. Pick an NFL. Why don't you follow Walter's Kansas City or Tennessee play? Just put that $5. But you want something now when you're watching the video. It doesn't matter what it is because it doesn't need to hit. You're going to get $200 in free bets back right away. So we want you to click that link. Take advantage of it below. Join up DK with a bankroll. I know a lot of you are like, I'm not doing anything until I get something for it. I'm the same way. Now we have something for it, $200 in free bets. All right, my friend, one more game to get to here to close out the regular season. 
Yeah, it's crazy line movement in this game. I was hoping this news would come out on Thursday instead of Wednesday. So we would get a great line in the contest. Uh, the news was that Justin Fields is going to be out and Nathan yeah. Peterman is going to start. So this line moved from like three and a half to seven and a half uh, almost overnight. Uh, but, you know, this doesn't scare me. Like I, my mentality here is that if you like the Vikings at three and a half, you should like them at seven and a half. And the reason I say that is because sports books often don't get middle. Like it happens yeah. occasionally, like rarely, but the sports books don't put themselves in a position to get middled. So either this game's going to blow out or the Bears are going to surprise and win this game or maybe lose by a field goal. So I I, I wouldn't be concerned from the line moving from three and a half to seven and a half. Uh, what I'm wondering is, uh, like, I was doing research on this last night. Like, will the Vikings play the starters? Like, they can move to the two seed if the 49ers lose to the Cardinals. It seems unlikely because the 49ers are 14-point favorites. So you could argue, okay, maybe the Vikings don't play the starters. But I was reading a quote from uh, Kevin O'Connell. Uh, so he said, uh, not only do we have a chance to get the number two seed, but we get to rectify the issues from last week. And that kind of tells okay. me that kind of tells me that the Vikings will play their starters. Uh, we saw Kirk Cousins throwing in a 41 to 10 game last week uh, to Jalen Naylor. Uh, so I, I think that Kevin, Con Kevin O'Connell is one of these coaches who's going to be uh, playing his, his, his backups in week 18. Uh, we see it with some coaches, some coaches rest the starters. It really varies. Uh, but I, I think that um, I, I think that the Vikings, uh, if they play the starters, should have a very easy time uh, with, with the Bears with Nathan Peterman. I mean, the, the only reason the Bears are remotely competitive was Justin Fields running the ball. And we saw what happened after he stopped running last week. I was kind of lamenting that pick because uh, after the first 10 minutes, he had 105 rushing yards. And it looked like the Bears, the Bears were up 10 to 7. It looked like they were going to be very competitive and cover the spread. And then Fields gets hurt and then doesn't run after that. And they lose 41 right. to 10. So uh, if they don't have Fields running, like, and they have Peterman, who's even worse passer than Fields, like, what do they have? They have a dreadful offensive line. They have no one who can catch the ball besides Chase Claypool. Uh, they have a terrible defense. Uh, so if the Vikings play the starters, they should be able to name the score. So, yeah, I like the Vikings minus seven and a half. All right, let's run it back. Your five plays and anything at all. Maybe there was a play that just just missed the, the – and you want to leave it on the cutting floor. Yeah, so the, the five plays are the Raiders plus nine and a half, Titans plus six, Rams plus six and a half, Ravens plus seven and a half, and the Vikings minus seven and a half. Uh, the two that almost made the cut, uh, Browns plus two and a half. I was really hoping this would be three. Uh, this is another situation where I think the team that's that's in the playoff or trying to make the playoffs is going to choke against the team that's not. We saw Miles Garrett come out and say, like, we live for moments like this. Yeah, they, they, would love, they would love to knock the Steelers out of the playoffs. Uh, the Steelers haven't beaten many teams by more than three this year. Like, like they're seven and two with TJ Watt. Four of those wins were by three, exactly three. So that's why I was really hoping for the three, you know, get a push as the worst case scenario. Uh, but I, I think the Browns win this game. So um, if it's announced that the Vikings uh, are not going to play the starters, I think the Steel or I think the Browns plus two and a half are going to be on my card. The other one's 49ers minus 14. A outside of every game this, uh, this week, I, I, th I think this is the one where you have the greatest mismatch, where you have the, uh, the, the 49ers pass rush versus the Cardinals dreadful offensive line. I think that's way too big, big an advantage for the 49ers. We saw it la last time they played. It was, uh, 38 to 10 in Mexico City. Uh, now the 49ers are at home and there's no Colt McCoy like we had in, la in that game. There's no DeAndre Hopkins like we had in that game. Uh, the 10 Cardinals missed Wednesday's practice. Uh, it seems a mess. I don't see how they compete with, with uh, David Blau at, at quarterback uh, throwing to Greg Dortch and Trey McBride. Like, there's no way they're going to compete with 49ers. Uh, so as long as the 49ers are interested, uh, they should be able to cover the spread easily. 14 points. Yeah. Monster, man. Mon what a way to end the show and the regular seat. And to be fair, that was the cutting floor, so that did not make it. All right, one more time, WalterFootball.com. You know about the mock drafts. They're updated routinely throughout the day, throughout the week. You guys are doing a bunch of other stuff, too. I, I do want you to highlight the other fantastic things that are happening on the site beyond the mock drafts, which you guys are crushing, mind you. Yeah, we have updated picks throughout the week, uh, Thursday thoughts, Saturday notes, and, and final thoughts on Sunday morning, uh, where we update uh, anything that has to do with injuries and line movements. And and if I change my mind and do research and uh, if I feel differently about a game, we'll, we'll update that throughout the week. Uh, we have our national championship uh, pick uh, it's up on the site as well, so you can check that out too. Uh, fantasy rankings uh, for those playing DFS. Uh, and uh, after the season's over, we're going to have NBA picks against the spread. We had a great year last year. Awesome. Uh, so we're, we're going to do that too. So uh, yeah, you can get everything at WalterFootball.com. Fantastic, brother. And we'll be back next week. Look at some playoffs, right? Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. We're, we're going to have six games uh, for the playoffs. So instead of five picks, we're going to have six. So uh, looking forward to that. Awesome. All right. For Walter, WalterFootball.com here on Odd Shopper. Thumbs up, subscribe, take advantage of what we have, take advantage of what he has, and we'll see you next week.
Sounds good. See you then.